Got this in the mail today. Civil 3D 2021. They're getting cheap. They used to send it in a box. Now they just sent me, they sent me three FedEx envelopes. Each FedEx envelope had a jump drive in it. Not exactly sure what the story is there. Unless they've got overabundance of them. They just decided I needed them. But anyways, Civil 3D 2021. Okay, so welcome back to Surveying with Robert. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. I didn't sleep much last night. And it's going to take this big cup of coffee to get me going this morning. So, um, how about we jump into Trimble Business Center 101, episode number two, just as quick as I wake up. So, first things first. It's five o'clock in the morning. I can't seem to get a video built because during the day, normal working hours, <laughs> I get I get phone calls all day long about one thing or another. So I love helping everybody out, but boy, it sure makes it difficult for me to get this stuff done. So um, let's jump into Business Center and uh, showed you guys in the last video how to um, how to do the whole. Um, find the version that you need, um, what the cost was, and everything else. So just kind of introduce you a little bit to Business Center. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in. We're going to see how to make this puppy run. So <clears throat> I've got pretty much a clean slate of Business Center up here on the screen. Um, I did have somebody send me some points yesterday, and I had to bring them in take a look at them real quick. But anyways... Um, what I want to show you guys, is if you notice here in the project center, I don't have any projects up. So if I had some existing projects that I've been working on, they would be here in this project work area, project real estate here. Okay. So um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Trimble Connect and some of that stuff. We'll be getting into some of that because uh, there's some things you do like background maps that I've been showing you guys that you can do a business center with that. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit later. Today, what I wanted to show you was basically how to build a template. So, um, like I told you, the thing that kind of drove this was my buddy uh, from Arkansas, Scott Foster, uh, asking me to do a TBC 101 for him and his guys. So, let me show you how to get this thing fired up, and let's look at how to create a template for the area that you're working in, okay? So, first thing we want to do is go to New Project. Okay. I don't have any templates in here. I literally had to delete them so I could show you guys how this stuff works. So we're going to build some new templates. So what you want to do is you want to start out. If you use US Survey Foot, I would suggest you start your template with US Survey Foot. If you use, um, you know, something else like International Foot or whatever, use that to base your template on. I'm going to use US Survey Foot because here in Mississippi, Arkansas, Alabama, we all use US Survey Foot. So let's go there. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say OK. So we wait for a second or two for it to load. And the first thing it's going to load is this grid that I absolutely hate. Here's the grid. So now what I want to do is I want to get rid of this grid by clicking this little button down here in the lower right hand corner. You're going to see some little bitty tools down here. So you're going to have rectangular selection, polygonal selection, change the screen from black to white, and then you're going to have a um, toggle grid lines, okay? So we're going to get rid of the grid lines, and then if you'll notice, right next to it, we have U.S. Survey Foot, okay? That is our coordinate system, pretty much, our projection, whatever you want to call it. So... Um, Right now it's at grid, and that is the default because that's the way it came in because that's the that's what we selected when we opened the project. Two ways to get to your coordinate system. One would be to go to US Survey Foot. If I click on that, it's going to bring up my project settings. Your project settings hold all your settings, 
that makes sense, doesn't it? Project settings holds all your settings. Okay, so ooh, it's early, isn't it? Um, so units, coordinates, distance, we're gonna look at some of that stuff real quick, and we're not gonna dive too deep into it because we'll dive deeper into some of the settings when we start bringing points in and stuff, okay? So um, I'm just gonna cancel that so I can show you up here at the top, there again, this little bitty button up here at the top, I got a deal that says project settings. Click on that, same thing, okay? So up here, down there, either way you wanna get to it, whatever's more comfortable for you. I'm running about 40 inch monitors, so it really kind of depends on where my cursor's at as relationship to the screen and how far I have to travel to get to the other spot, right? Okay, so you have all this general information, company information, user information, same things in Dad Collector. Um, do you want to use it? Man, that's your call. Uh, I typically, personally, don't put anything in there. Should you? Probably. I mean, when I kept field notes all the time, I always, that first page, you know, always had all that information, who was on the crew, what the weather was like, yada, yada, yada. That's kind of what this is. It's kind of like the first page of your field book, right? Let's just go to coordinate system and you'll notice down here it says change so i can change the coordinate system uh to whatever i want so i hit change now what it's going to pop up for me is the different coordinate systems that i've used in the past even though i've updated version updated version updated version it's keeping up with a lot of this stuff so i just went from 5.2 to 5.21 and all this came over with it all these different systems also my um, templates that I had set up also came over with the T so you can choose if you wanted to recent coordinate systems if you didn't want to have a template but I'm going to click on coordinate system I'm going to go right here and you can spread this column out a little bit so you can see it better and you're going to say see United States state plane 1983 okay so let's go let's see scott's in arkansas south so scott you're going to choose arkansas south and then you're going to say next and then we're going to look we definitely want to run a geoid model because if you're in a state plane coordinates you have to have a geoid model um so let's just make it survey quality because i'm a surveyor sounds like a good excuse doesn't it finish okay so we've got our coordinate system set up. Now the only other thing I would really recommend probably at this point is going into my units. Go to your coordinate. It says northern easting elevation. Because of the original template we chose, US survey feet, is the reason this is all set up for us. That's why we kind of took the easy road, right? So latitude and longitude, decimal precision, blah, blah, blah. Coordinate and elevation. You know, this one's tricky. I think that third decimal place out there causes a lot of problems with a lot of people. So I'm not a big fan of the third decimal place, but if you wanted to change it to two or you want to change it to four, right here's where you would do it. You can change it to either way you want to. So uh, if you want trailing zeros, blah, 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 you've got um, some other different options here. We're not going to worry about it at the time. Format, degrees, minutes, seconds, obviously. Um, so distance U.S. survey foot, there again, decimal precision on a measurement, yada, 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 yada. We're going to go through there, look at that. If we look at computations, we can look at point tolerances. So if you have something that's out um, 66 thousandths on a horizontal, you're going to get a red flag. If you have something vertical that's out um, 16 hundredths, you're going to get a flag. So uh, there's the mapping grade. And it looks like, I used to say that mapping grade that I could probably throw a rock and get it close. That vertical's 32 foot. Can I throw a rock 32 foot vertically? Not real sure. Anyways. Okay, so GNSS vectors, mean angles, blah, blah. Like I said, we'll get into all these settings later. Don't stroke out. We'll worry about it. When the time comes, right? We're setting up. If we need to set it up for some reason, or we need to go back and look at it. Right now, we're just going to leave everything at default. I'm going to say okay. So I've got my coordinate system set up. It's set up for Arkansas South, right? If you look down here at the lower right, it says Arkansas South Grid. So I've got it set up for Grid, um, Arkansas South. The Grid and Ground thing we'll get into there again at a later point. I'll show you how to go into a local site and how to change all that. Um, 
It's definitely something that I want to get across to you guys as the grid ground settings and how that stuff works. So right now though, let's do this. So when we open it up, we have plan view. Now, depending on your version of Business Center and if you've ever done anything with it in the past, you may have something up here. There's two things that I like to have in mind. And um, one of those is my filter manager. So your filter manager has all your layers and everything on it. Your vector lines, you can turn your vector lines on and off. You can turn your total station lines on and off. Now, one of the things I, I like about bringing things into Business Center is everything is tied together through vector lines or through these total station lines. So if I move some vector line that ties everything together, everything else will move as well. And I, I definitely want that. If I'm trying to move a control point for some reason, I want everything else to move with it. So um, these are all the different settings. So like a uh, photogram to you, let's say the little icon that looks like a SX10, you can uncheck that and that goes away, right? So then we have our layers. And if you were messing with SX10 data, you would have regions down here, um, things of that nature. So this is really handy. Down here at the bottom, which is probably overlooked a lot. Let's make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. Show point IDs, show point symbols, show feature code, show elevation. Now you, you probably have seen that in the map setting in Access. It's kind of the same thing. Show disconnected points. If you wanted to do something and all you wanted is the line work, you can just reach over here and grab this and say, uncheck that show disconnected points. And when you uncheck that, then what's going to happen is, um, all the points are going to disappear off the screen. So that's a good way just to make everything leave without having to turn layers on and off. Okay. Which is something else we're going to get into is feature code stuff. Okay. But anyways, let's just roll along with this. So you need a uh, view filter manager and you need project explorer. I definitely recommend that your default template run with both these because your project explorer has all your raw data in it. So, you're going to have points up here, and if you watch that video I did on fixing data, you'll see that all your points line up right here, and then you can go to properties of each one of those points, and you can see exactly what's going on with each point. So, and we'll bring some data in so you guys can see that. So, you definitely want these two set up. You want um, Project Explorer, and if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, down here at the left, you'll see where it says View Filter Manager is grayed out. I click on that. Now I'm using View Filter Manager. If I want to go to Project Explorer, I just click on Project Explorer and I go back. We'll get in a little deeper into uh, your filter settings and how you can set up stuff yourself so that um, different settings for you on the filter for maybe different, maybe you've got a project coming up and you need this set up differently and you don't want to see some of this stuff and this and that. You can customize all that. So. And believe it or not, Business Center is pretty customizable. Um, just a real quick little tip. If you go into support, customize ribbons, and define command shortcuts, makes your life a little bit easier. So define command shortcuts. Let's say you want to delete something. You want to just hit delete on the keyboard. I can go into define command shortcuts, and I can set that up. And I'm getting ahead of myself once again. Anyways, I'll show you guys that later. We're not going to worry about it right now. So we go back to home, we look at this, we've got all this set up, we have everything the way we want. Now when we need to set a, a template up. Okay, so I've got everything like I want my template, how I want to see Business Center when I go into, if I've got a project coming in Arkansas South, and I want it to look like this. This is what I want. So I'm going to File, Save as Template. So I'm going to call it... Arkansas South. So maybe I want to look at my Jewid model and I want to, um, you know, um, let's cancel this. Let's see. I think I've got, I can't remember if I use 12B or 18 on it. So if we go back to coordinate system and we look, I'm using 18. Okay. So then maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to say save template as. Let's go back to. Arkansas South, and I want to say maybe I want to say Jewett 18, and that way I know when I open up this Arkansas South template that I'm using Jewett 18, not like Jewett 12B or something, right? 
So you can uh, set this if you want to as a default. If this is where you primarily work, we're gonna set it as a default. I'm gonna say save, and I did that for you, Scott. So um, so we have it saved. Now then, don't screw up right here and start bringing data in, right? What you wanna do is you wanna go to File, we wanna go to New, and if you look, Arkansas South, uh, GOID 18, read only, and it's default. I say okay. Bada bing, there it is. It brought everything in. You can see it says Arkansas South. We have our uh, view filter manager, our project explorer, and that grid is not there. So that is how you set up a default template for Trimble Business Center. So that concludes episode number two. And I'll see if I can't spit out some more for you real quick. And then we're gonna, once we get everything set up, and I, I probably the next thing we'll do is bring maybe some, um, some data in. We'll take a look at it a couple different ways. So you guys, as always, be safe. God bless. I really, really, really appreciate you guys watching. I think I'm about 3,000 subscribers right now. So I'm starting to be a force to reckon with with Trimble. So, um, Basically, uh, you guys are helping me with Trimble try to get some stuff done. I have a little bit better voice thanks to you guys now, so I greatly appreciate it. Uh, you got any buddies out there surveying, get them to like and subscribe. The more you like and subscribe, the more power I have to communicate with Trimble to try to make some changes that you and I both know need to be made. So, God bless. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Love you guys. See you in the next video. Be careful.